Empires come and go. When you think of great empires of the past, you probably think of Greece, Egypt, and Rome. All of these were certainly great empires of the past, but there were other empires of the Near East long ago that were also important. The lands of the Near East changed hands many times among the ancient empires. The countries that are Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran had many different rulers. In fact, the Empire of Babylon ruled part of these lands from around 1900 to 1600 BC. One of the ancient kings of Babylon was Hammurabi. He wrote laws for the people to follow. These laws were recorded in stone, so we can still read them today. They are the famous laws of Hammurabi's code. After 300 years, the ancient empire of Babylon fell. Then another empire, the Assyrian Empire, rose in power in the Near East. The Assyrian Empire was very strong for a long time, but like all empires, it could not last forever. It came to an end around 600 BC when Babylon returned to power. Babylon Rises Again At first, the Assyrians controlled the lands in the northern part of the Near East. Over time, they expanded their empire to the south and took control of the city of Babylon. Because the Assyrian Empire was so big, there were many kings across the empire. These kings ruled small parts of the empire, but they had to follow the orders of the empire's Assyrian king. In 626 BC, a new king took control in Babylon. His name was Nabopolassar, and he was tired of living under Assyrian rule. Nabopolassar led the people of Babylon in a war against Assyria, and he won. Then, in 612 BC, he won an even bigger battle against Assyria. The Babylonian Empire was beginning to grow. Babylon's Great King In 605 BC, Nabopolassar's son became the next king of Babylon. His name was Nebuchadnezzar, and he was the most famous king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Like his father, Nebuchadnezzar was good at leading the people in war. He expanded Babylon's empire north and west. The Babylonian army usually moved people out of the new lands that were conquered as the empire grew. The Assyrians usually did this too. The reason the king wanted to do this was to keep the people in fear. It also made it harder for people from the new land to get together again and fight against the king. One of the cities that Nebuchadnezzar took was Jerusalem. This was the most important city of the Jewish people in the Near East. When Nebuchadnezzar took Jerusalem in 586 BC, he ordered thousands of Jewish people there to move to Babylon where they lived as slaves. One young man at the time was named Daniel. This was the same Daniel who wrote one of the books of the Bible, which tells about life in Babylon at the court of King Nebuchadnezzar. The Wonders of Babylon King Nebuchadnezzar was not just a good fighter, he was also a king who had dreamed of making Babylon a great and beautiful city. Nebuchadnezzar ordered the damaged wall around the city to be built again, better than before. This wall kept the people inside the city safe, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't want this city wall to be just like the walls of other cities. He had special gates built, too. One of these gates was the Ishtar Gate, named after the goddess Ishtar. The gate was built with special blue stone and had pictures of cows and lions on it. All visitors to the city saw this beautiful gate as they entered. But the wonders of Babylon did not stop at the city's Ishtar Gate. Inside the city, Nebuchadnezzar had a huge ziggurat built. This was a temple to the Babylonian god Marduk. 
The actual temple was at the top of the ziggurat, 90 meters above the city. If the temple of Marduk failed to impress visitors, then the king's hanging gardens certainly would. Although Greek visitors to the city wrote about the wonderful hanging gardens of Babylon, there is still some question today about if they were real. From the Greek writers, we read that the gardens grew on balconies above the city streets. The highest balcony was over 20 meters above the street, but plants grew on lower balconies as well. According to legend, Nebuchadnezzar built the gardens for one of his wives. She came from a green land with many plants, but Babylon wasn't like that. The hanging gardens were built to help her remember her faraway home. During his 43 years as king, Nebuchadnezzar built palaces, bridges, and more. City Life Although the city of Babylon was filled with wonders, it was not wonderful for everyone there. Probably about 200,000 people lived in Babylon. The city was full of people, and it was dirty. During the long, hot summers, it must have smelled terrible. All around the city, farmers grew things that people in the city needed. However, the farmers did not live outside the city near their fields. They had homes inside the city walls. A typical house in the city of Babylon had three floors, but the house was not large. It was tall and thin. The streets between the houses were thin as well. People threw all of their garbage out into the streets beside or in front of their houses. One way that the leaders of the city cleaned the dirty streets was by covering the streets with clay. This made the whole street higher. Sometimes it was a problem for people to go in and out of their front doors when the streets got higher. Then they had to cut openings down to their doors or they could build steps up and make new doors on a higher floor of their house. A New Empire Rises Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon for 43 years. He expanded the empire that his father left him and made Babylon one of the greatest cities of that age. When he died, his son, Emil Merodach, also called Evil Merodach became king. Emil Merodach was not a great king. In fact, he only ruled for three years. Then, in the three years after that, two more kings led the empire. One of these was a child. As you might guess, the Babylonian Empire was in trouble. In 556 BC, the last king of Babylon came to power. His name was Nabonidus, also called Nabu Nadaid. He was probably a son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar. He was made king after some trouble in the city caused by the priests of Marduk. During his time as king, Nabonidus spent years away from Babylon. His son, Belshazzar, served as co-king in the city. Together, Nabonidus and his son led the empire for 14 years. To the north of Babylon, Persia was growing in power. The king of Persia, Cyrus the Great, came down and captured Babylon in 539 BC. He killed Belshazzar, but no one really knows what happened to Nabonidus. However, one thing is clear. The fall of Babylon to Cyrus the Great brought an end to the Neo-Babylonian Empire. <laughs>